Okay, for this next exercise, we're going to be making a, a half channel band again, but instead of using some round brilliants, we're going to use uh, some square stones, some princess cut stones. And if you look at the uh, actual ring band itself, it's a fancier ring, just with some more detail. And I'm just going to show you another method of making a ring like this. We're going to use a different technique. So hopefully this covers you in the event that you have a job like this that comes up. Okay, let's get into it. So my perspective view is maximized here. If yours is not, just double click on the perspective window to maximize that. We'll come back across to our gauge tool. And I'm going to select a oh, different size. Let's make this a size L and a half today. And once again, we click the check mark to accept that size. Let's change to a rendered display mode. And the first thing we'll do is come to our front viewport. And once again, we're going to split the ring band. So to do that, we go to our drawing tab and across to our split function. And we're going to split by point. At the bottom, just click on the word point. And if your curve selected, uh, you'll, you already have the crosshair to do this, but if not, just click on the curve. And let's just do this from the bottom section of the ring band. So let's click somewhere here. And I'll just go across to a similar point on the other side. And enter when done. So just one thing, if you note down at the bottom of your screen, it does say that one curve has been split into two pieces and you can click on the bottom section of or the top section. So we'll start with the top section of our ring band in this case. I'm going to flip across to the perspective viewport. So what we want to do is come to our jewelry tab and run our channel studio. More than likely the channel will be flipped in the wrong way so just flip the channel here right way up and we'll firstly just come in and adjust the size and cut of gems so we know we're not going to be using some round stones for this ring so we'll come in and select different type of cut and we're going to use a princess cut so just double click on that window and you'll see the stones have changed now we're going to use uh, 1.5mm stones and I'll change to the front viewport and the first thing we know is that the cutter position needs to be changed so it will come in and move this down. You do want to make sure that they're in adequately and not uh, protruding out the top of your ring band. So we'll come in and We'll adjust the height of the ring band. We'll probably need something around two millimeters. We know that the channel width needs to be less than 1.5 mil. That's the width of our channel band. And you might get a better idea. Let me just flip to the perspective view. And we'll change this to 1.4 mil. And this is the width of either side of the channel so we'll make that 0.9 in fact let's make it 0.8 and this is the metal underneath the channel so we want this to be 0 0.6 0 0.7 and I can come back to my front view now and just check the position of the stones there okay this indicates the position of the channel this is the channel where the channel ends and this is where the, the, the bottom part of the metal is going to start so let's adjust the spacing for each of the stones now so we'll flip back to our gem and cut tab and let's decrease the number of stones here and looks okay and the other thing we want to do is change the channel profile because by default there is a square channel profile that's in use and we can select a different shape to use so for this exercise I just want to use something with a fancy edge just to illustrate this more clearly to you. So under your channel profile selector I'm going to select 006, this one that looks like it's got a wavy sort of edge, that's the outside edge. 
and if we go to our perspective view you'll see that's changed now. So now the next thing we have to do is create the bottom part of our ring. Now in a previous exercise I showed you a way to do this using the dynamic profile tool but when you've got a more complicated shape like this the dynamic profile uh, is not the tool to use. We'll actually do it another way. So let's close off the channel builder tool. Just drag this around so you can see this easier. So what I'm going to do is we want to create a solid version of this cross section here. So we don't want the channel, we want a closed section here. So the way I'm going to do that is from our modeling tools, the function is called duplicate edge. It's abbreviated here to dupe edge. Click on that and it prompts you to select the edges to duplicate. So what we want to duplicate is this bottom edge, this side edge here, this here, but we don't want this channel section. So once I've selected those edges I can click enter to select them and I can then come to my drawing tab and I can join them. Now we just need to create a straight line that closes off this cross section. So using my line tool you do need to make sure that your object snaps are active. They're indicated by these icons at the bottom of your screen. And you want to put a mark or a check or a tick in the word end. We want the end snap active. If your object snaps are not active, you can click on it at the bottom of your screen to activate them. And the word O snap, which is short for object snap, will go bold that menu will appear at the bottom of your screen. So do make sure there's a check mark in the word end. You don't need one in any of the other ones. I'll leave my quad on, that's okay. Now when I move my cursor over towards the end you'll see that my cursor does change. And if you look here at my cursor it says that it's found the end and that's going to be the start of my line. So I click to indicate the start of my line and I come across to the other side of my cross section and it finds that end and it says end of line and I click there once again. Now I need to join that line to the purple outline curve there so holding my shift button down I can click once to select that and my other curve make sure both are selected and join to join them both. So what I might do is just so you can get a, a handle or an understanding of what's happening here I'm just going to hide the top channel and I'll also click my middle mouse wheel to select the gems and holding my shift button down I'm going to come across to the right hand side of my screen and hide all of that just so that we've got that cross section active in fact let's even hide the top part of that curve just so you you can visualize this what we're going to do is we're going to sweep this cross section along this path this curve to create a surface and that's going to create the bottom section of our band so to do that we come to our modeling tab and the command we want to use is sweep one rail. It prompts us to select the rail. The rail is the path if you like that the cross section will follow. So that's this bottom section of our curve and we don't have to hit enter it just asks us to select the cross section. So we'll click on the cross section and press enter when done and we'll press enter again a second time and you don't need to change anything here. The style should be just set to free form is OK. And we click the OK button here to accept that value. So you'll see now it's created the bottom half of my ring band. The other thing to note is that this is an open surface. So to join this to the top half of the ring it does need to be closed. So we can simply select the surface now and using our cap tool we can click cap to close that section off okay so let's come across holding our shift button down we'll unhide the top section of our band and we can simply join the two together using the boolean function so select the top section of the band holding your shift button select the bottom section of the band and click on boolean union 
to join them. And the next step is to remove the metal in the top section using our cutters. So we'll click on our middle mouse wheel and so select the gems and we'll come across to our jewelry tab and run our cutter studio. Now once again as we had with our rounds we don't want the cutters cutting into our channel. So we'll come across here and we'll scale this down to about 90% of the original size and you'll see that that's now the top section of the cutter is not cutting into the edge of my metal. That's what I'm trying to avoid because we don't want to eat into the metal that's already there. Now if I go into my front viewport you'll find it much easier to see what's happening with the cutters if you stay in this viewport and especially if you are in the wireframe mode you'll, you'll be able to see the cutters cutting through the metal here. So just to point out here again this is obviously the inside edge of our band. This represents the wall thickness in the bottom of our band so we don't have to worry about what the cutter looks like up here. What we're concerned about is just cutting an aperture or an opening at the bottom of our stones. So what I normally do is come across here to adjust the scale of the cutter because we don't want it cutting into the metal at the top of our ring band. So change that scale to 90% and don't forget to tab to change that. Don't worry about the seat because that's not going to be cut out. All that's going to be cut out with the cutters is the cutter will intersect in this area and this is the area that's going to be removed. One thing you can do is just increase the size here of this opening here and some people do like to flare this outwards which you can do and we can say OK clicking the check mark to accept that. So now let's go to our perspective viewport. So we're going to do a boolean difference now. We're going to, to remove the cutters where they intersect with our ring band. Click on your middle mouse wheel, select the gems and let's hold our shift button down and come across and hide those gems. And we'll go to our modeling tab and over to our boolean function and run the boolean difference. The boolean difference is asking us to select the surfaces to subtract from. That's our band. And we click enter to continue. And what are we subtracting with? That's the cutters. So you can click anywhere either in the top or inside where the cutters are. And click enter. And now you'll see the metal has been removed where it intersected with the cutters. If we go to our front viewport, you'll see that area there. So now what I might do is let's go and select a different metal for this. We'll come across in our tab on the right hand side and the little gold colored sphere, click on that. And you may be starting off on the gems tab but click down here to the metals tab and we won't use gold for this I'm going to use a platinum finish I can select the material and drag it onto my ring band to change the material if you do want to select a different material you could just click on the material and again drag it onto your ring band to change that I'll just change mine back to Platinum and let's hold down our Shift button and come across to display our gemstones here. A different sort of half channel band from our last exercise. Okay, that's it. Thank you.